Uh, I asked Sharon a couple of months ago to, um, to share today about Compassionate Ministries. And as you've heard, this is Compassion Sunday, and she's going to tell you everything you want to know about compassion, right? And probably someday, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Let's, you know, let's welcome Sharon. Can we do that? Bless you. Bless you. Is this on? Is it on? Well, good morning. Um, I was sitting in my seat this morning, and as um, the screens weren't working, and as um, we were just praising the Lord just over and over in my head, I just kept saying, greater is he that in, is in me than he that, who is in the world. Um, greater than any circumstance we have, greater than any problem, greater than any financial difficulty, greater than any illness, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And I just wanted to say that because it's just been pouring out of me today that, um, man, no matter what we face, no matter what struggles we have, he is greater. We can count on that. He is greater. Well, I'm going to start um, by talking about um, compassion. We talk about compassion a lot around here. And um, I just want to define what compassion means. Um, and I don't know what you think when you hear of compassion or when you hear about people who are compassionate. Um, some people maybe think that people who are compassionate are weak people. But in truth, um, expressing compassion towards others reveals a strength of character, um, a, a great strength of character. Um, the word compassion, as it is used in the Bible, means to be moved inwardly, to yearn with tender mercy, um, affection, pity, and empathy. It refers to the deepest possible feelings. The phrase moved with compassion means to be moved in the Bible. It, it means to be moved with the inner organs. It has the same idea as when we say from the bottom of our heart. Um, someone has defined compassion as sympathy coupled with the desire to help. And sympathy means the capacity to share feelings, to enter into the same feelings, to feel the same thing. So compassion, then, is sharing the feelings of others and possessing a desire to help them in their troubles. There's a story about a man who fell into a pit and he couldn't get himself out. A Christian scientist came along and said, you only think you're in the pit. A Pharisee said, only bad people fall in pits. And a compassionless fundamentalist said, you deserve your pit. A charismatic said, just confess that you're not in the pit. A Presbyterian said, uh, this was no accident, you know. An optimist said, things could be worse. A pessimist said, things are going to get worse. But Jesus, seeing the man in the, fit, in the pit, lifted him out of the pit. And that's the essence of Christ and of his compassion. And that's the spirit of God that we need to be operating within us. Um, we read a couple of scriptures about compassion, but I had a couple of more that I wanted to read. In Matthew 15, verse 32, Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They've been here with me for three days, and they have nothing left to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, or they will faint along the way. In Matthew 14, 14, Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Matthew 20, two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, We want to see. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Instantly, they could see, and then they followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared, and the man was healed. Jesus has compassion for those who are suffering. In Luke 7, soon after Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. 
When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. How was Jesus able to show compassion to so many different kinds of people in so many different circumstances and settings? Jesus knew all their faults. He knew their sins. But he did not let that get in the way of his compassion and love. I think it's Pastor Mike who says to us often that Jesus doesn't see us for who we are, but for who we could be. Jesus didn't look at what was on the surface. Um, He looked at them at the point of their deepest need. How do you and I see people? Sometimes I think we base our opinion on what we see with our eyes or what we hear about them. Sometimes we may see a homeless person and think, why don't they just get a job? We don't see that they did have a job, but they have a disabling um, injury that prevents them from working. Or they have mental health issues or other conditions that prevent them from being able to hold down a job. Sometimes we see a nice person with, uh, or a person with nice clothes, you know, North Face jackets, you know, clothes that I don't have, name brand. They don't know that they got it at the free store or they got it at a thrift shop. Um, We think to ourselves that, um, you know, they've got big screen TVs or, you know, I hear this stuff all all the time, you know, we're just wondering, you know. But the, the, the point is that sometimes people are living with no hope and no future, they spend their money on things that can make them have a little bit of happiness. And um, we just need to get beyond looking at the exterior of what we see in people and see them like Jesus does, not perceive their faults or try to judge why they are the way they are, but just look at them the way Jesus would and take care of them when they need it. Stephen Covey tells of an unusual experience on a New York subway while people were sitting quietly in the car, a man entered with his, noisiest, with his noisy and rambunctious children. The man sat down and closed his eyes as though he was oblivious to his rowdy children. The once quiet subway car was now just chaotic. The children's inappropriate behavior was obvious to everyone except the father. Finally, Covey confronted the man about his children. The man opened his eyes, he evaluated the situation, and then he said, Oh, I guess you're right. I probably should do something about it. We just came from the hospital where their mother died just an hour ago. I don't know what to think, and I guess they don't know either. We need to remember that compassion starts when we we begin to understand that people are carrying burdens that we know nothing about. One of my favorite quotes is this, Be kind, for everyone is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Jesus sets that model for us to... Um, show compassion, as I just read in a few scriptures. And that's why I started High Point Community Outreach. A lot of you are new and maybe have not heard what High Point Community Outreach is. Um, we, t- we call it HCO around here for short. So if you hear HCO, we're talking about the compassionate ministry arm of our church. And it's a 501c3 um, nonprofit organization, which is also a Nazarene Compassionate Ministry Center Um, with the General Church of the Nazarene, and I had um, put these in the bulletins, these little inserts that um, gives you the definition of um, both of those items. But what we do, what we want to do when we created High Point Community Outreach is begin to get outside our walls and help people in our community. Right now, and we've been doing this for three years, is that right? Three years, we've had the um, community meal once a month, and um, the food pantry, people can come in. Anybody can eat a meal with us. It's free. And um, they, but then to, there's income requirements for um, using the food pantry, but it's a choice food pantry, which means that they get to choose what they take home. We don't prepackage anything for them. They get to choose what they need for their family. So we do that once a month, which is on the third Wednesday of every month, which happens to be this coming um, Wednesday. Um, if anyone wants to help, um, you can see me after church. Um, So we started that um, because we just began to see that we needed to help reach out to our community and see that Jesus wanted us to have compassion on the poor, have compassion on those who who have needs, um, people who are hungry, people who are 
homeless, people who are in, just can't make ends meet. Um, in our Delaware community, um, the United Way of Delaware County just put out a needs assessment, and they're the top needs of our community um, are listed also on that sheet. But um, heroin and opiate use is a huge problem. Um, access to mental health services, food insecurity, which means that um, people do not have a reliable access to um, sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. Um, there are families that are in constant crisis. Um, we need more mentorship opportunities for young adults and youth. And then lack of trans transportation to get to jobs and to appointments is also, um, those are the top needs according to the United Way's needs assessment. And then some other interesting statistics. You know, people are surprised that Delaware has poverty. We are the richest county in the state, but we have a lot of people who are in need. We have more than 16,000 residents who struggle with food insecurity. Um, approximately 10,000 people fall below the poverty level. Um, that may not be high compared to when you think of large cities, but to me, if there's five people that are hungry or fall below the poverty level, we need to help them. 15% um, of our Delaware City Schools kids receive a free lunch at school. More than a third of households report to having to choose between paying for utilities and heating or to pay for food. And 95% of the residents who do use any of Delaware's emergency social services are employed but can't make ends meet. So those are some of the reasons why we created High Point Community Outreach, to be a part of the solution, to be a part of helping people in their need. And we know that ultimately we can do all of these things. For people, we can give them clothing, we can give them food, we can um, help them you know, with immediate needs, but we know that we need to, to bring the gospel to them as well. It's not just about, not just about food and, and clothing, but it's about um, bringing them Jesus. And, um, you know, we can't, we can't tell them about Jesus till we meet their needs. Someone, an anonymous person, um, penned these words, I was hungry, and you formed a humanities club and discussed my hunger. I was in prison, and you crept off quietly to your chapel and prayed for my release. I was naked, and in your mind you debated the morality of my appearance. I was sick, and you knelt and thanked God for your health. I was homeless, and you preached to me of the spiritual shelter of the love of God. I was lonely, and you left me, you left me alone to pray for me. You seem so close to God, but I'm still so very hungry and lonely and cold. And I just, I just pray that as a church and as a people here that we will um, continue to reach out to our community. We have a lot of, um, we have a lot of things that we support in the community. community. Um, this church is very good about supporting Family Promise, which Pastor Mike just talked to you about. Um, and our, the executive director of Family Promise is in our church, <laughs> Ben Powers. So that's um, that's awesome. And then um, we also um, support Common Ground Free Store, which I'm the director of Common Ground Free Store. And also Jill Ignazuski is the volunteer manager there. Um, I forgot to mention Patty Maxson. She is our um, church coordinator for Family Promise. So, um, and then also Darlene Insko is, my, is one of our managers at the Free Store as well. So High Point is doing an amazing job of, of um, helping the other uh, nonprofits in our community. And then um, the mobile market, which happens here um, on the first and third Mondays of each month, except for tomorrow because it's a holiday, so don't anybody show up. <laughs> but my mom and dad, Don and Karen, and Jane, and I know I'm going to forget people, that we have several of you who come and volunteer with that every month. So um, we just, I, I just think you guys do an amazing job of um, reaching out to our community and helping um, with the, the things that we support. There is something I want to bring up to you. Um, the Common Ground Free Store, um, since I'm the director there, I can talk about it. <laughs> but, um, we give out free clothing and shoes and toys and books and household items, um, anything, 
except for furniture and TVs. We pretty much give away. Um, we do this so that people can have more money. They don't have to go out and buy shoes and clothing. They have more money than to pay utilities or to buy food or whatever the other items are that they need. Um, but it's also a place where the building um, is only open four days a week and the rest of the time it sits empty. And we're looking for ways to uh, reach out to our community with other programs, um, allowing other nonprofits maybe to come in and use our building um, because that's where the community already gathers. But in addition to that, we want to make it a place where people can come and we can have a church service for them. And I hesitate to call it a church service, but that's what I'm identifying it to, is a place where we can come and have some refreshments, um, have um, music, and, and have a little mini sermon type um, type atmosphere and just share with each other. I'd like to see it become a place where we can just minister to our community who wouldn't necessarily walk into our church or into another church. So that's something that we're going to, our vision is to start, and um, we um, like to get some people from this church to be on a team that would, would do that each week, um, not necessarily every week, but have different teams so that you're not doing it maybe once a month or once every other month or something like that. So if anybody would have any interest in being a part of a church outside of our church um, type of ministry, I would really be happy to talk to you about that as well. So I'm, that's basically all that I wanted to talk to, talk to you about today. I'm just going to leave you with, um, with this scripture that has been my theme scripture um, for years, uh, Matthew 25. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality? or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, whenever you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. I just pray that my life will be such that um, when I meet people and when I see people, that I will treat them like they were Jesus. Um, so I invite you to join me, join us on our journey of compassionate ministries in our church and in our community. Thank you. Amen. Wow. Wasn't that informative? That was good. Good job, Sharon. Really, really. I know there's people out here, Sharon, thinking, I wish we could get a 20-minute sermon every week. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did really, really well. Thank you. Um, last week, at the end of my message, I talked about each one, reach one. Anybody remember that? Remember that? Um, it was a program that they did in the Mexico, uh, Central America region of the Church of the Nazarene. Every man win a man to Christ. Every woman win a, win a woman to Christ. And... Uh, and, but also as a part of that was every church to plant a church. And they had incredible growth throughout that whole process. And I talked to you about us doing that. And um, Sharon mentioned it. I, wanna, I just want to reiterate, it is, it is our vision that High Point Church now reaches to another church, to start another church. And I don't know if it will ever be an organized church church, but we want to start a regular ministry where people that might not come to our church could still hear the gospel message. 
And so we're asking you to very prayerfully consider if you'd like to be a part of that team. Our, our vision is that we have 20 people that could be on a team that would regularly, well, weekly go. And as Sharon said, you wouldn't have to go every week. If we had 20 people, we're, look, we're thinking maybe three or four people a week that would go. But some of you right now, something has just, just pricked your heart and you know that you want to be a part of that. I'm going to ask you today on the clipboard, and even if it's already been passed, pass them back through. If you want to write ministry or free store or something that would indicate that you're interested, you and your spouse or just you are interested in being a part of that team, we will then get in touch with you and we'll organize and talk about what it looks like. But but we'd really like to get 20 people that would say, I'd like to be a part of a ministry that reaches to, uh, to people that need the gospel. It'll be a simple service every week. It'll just be some singing together and um, sharing a, a, a testimony or a, or a, or a scripture lesson. Um, and, and we can talk about what your specific involvement will be. But I know that many of you would like to be a part of that. And, and I, I, I just feel... As, as your leader, I feel that, that God's waiting for us to, to really get outside of ourselves. And, and when we do, and not that we aren't, we are. You guys are incredible. But when we totally get outside of ourselves and reach a community that, that is, um, th- that's in need, then, then his blessings will pour out on us. Now, be, let's be careful. Sometimes when we say that word blessing, we tend to think finance. That's not what we're talking about. What, what would you pay for the joy that you have? What would you pay for the hope of eternal life? What would you pay for the, the family that we have at High Point? Those are the blessings of God. And he wants to pour out even more, I believe, as we, as we get outside of ourselves. Heavenly Father, thank you for meeting with us here today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for dying for us, God you loved us so much you came for our stories god each of us have a story each of us have needs and burdens we're carrying today god but you came for all of that lord help us to know how much you love us and how much you're for us how much you um, just want to help us god lord i thank you for your love that you came and in turn god you we can love others because you loved us first god and i pray that you'll help us we go out into our different worlds this week, or to reach out to others, to show love, to show compassion, to show mercy on those that you put in our path. Help us to make the most of each opportunity we have. Be with us this day, God. Bless each one that's here. We just give you this day in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.